Some people raise concerns about there not being enough studies about the effects of 5G on the human body. Is 5G safe? Look, uh, I have a very simple answer uh, to, to, to this question. As we build new capabilities, such as 5G, power is going down, especially when you think about reducing the number of base stations, the network's becoming more dense. So as you do that, the the power becomes lower. If your power phone- Power radiated from- Power each. radiated from the phone and from the tower. As you get closer to the tower, you don't need that much power to reach the tower. So as, as we move from 4G to 5G, I think we see a reduction in the amount of powers required to close the radio link. Now, also you have a number of organizations. The FCC, for example, has rigorous uh, programs, which they do a lot of tests uh, to validate uh, you know, the safety of those devices. And I think we have, has been a model for other countries to also to adopt the same things. Uh, cellular's been around for a number of decades now. Uh, I think smartphones are most uh, beloved device uh, today. And I I would argue how it's difficult to answer those questions because you, uh, but I'll argue that the data to date have we seen in 3G and 4G, um, you know, has uh, shown that uh, uh, a lot of the initial concerns were not valid. We look at 5G, even though it's new, it's just, Less power, so we look at from from a physics uh, standpoint. So, from a physics, from a biology perspective, th there's a lot of evidence. There's studies that show that it's not uh, dangerous; that it is in fact safe. However, the concern that people have is when you scale technology exponentially, um, how will that change human civilization? I mean, that doesn't apply to five G; that applies to every technology. How is, you said smartphone is the most beloved device. But love sometimes hurts. That's, so uh, that's the impact a... on society. We don't know, and and there's a little bit of fear. There's both excitement and fear. It's a great topic of conversation, actually. So so let me give you my perspective on this. And you started to see some things actually happening right now. So let me step back, and let's talk about the fact that we are in a fully interconnected society. That when when uh, when you look of the situations today, we talk about smartphones, uh, largest uh, development platform. Uh, so much now of our life, uh, we are connected to the smartphone and as a result, and we are all connected and we're connected. And then we're building digital twins of everything, right? So, so when you look at that picture, when you look at the picture of this connected society, uh, you started to have the following thoughts, which I think are very healthy, which means in the same way that in the physical world, you're entitled to some rights, you have obligations, and there's a lot of uh, things that protect your, your integrity. I think as a rule, we're going to see the society evolving, so those things extend to your digital being mm -hmm. uh, of people and things. And I think it's just natural. It's just natural. Uh, it, it's just a natural path. And you started to see things like that. For example, the Europeans has done uh, a lot in this area. I'll say the Europeans probably ahead in the United States um, thinking about privacy laws, digital privacy laws, most recent the DMA, the Digital Markets Act, which I think is a great thing. I think we're, we, we believe there's incredible uh, thought in to enable ability to regulate the digital market so that there's innovation and competition. So not, not a single company uh, can control all the data and then decide, you know, uh, how things are going to work on the digital realm. And even if we think about the potential of things like the metaverse as we're connecting physical and digital spaces. So I think it's a natural evolution. Of course, regulate, regulation and laws always follow technology. But but the fact that we're uh, moving to our interconnected society, there's there's no going back. Uh, we are a fully interconnected society. But there is opportunity uh, to think about how the digital to win uh, should people people and governments should think about it so that we get the best of a technology 
without the, any downside. Yeah, so when you say digital twin, that's one of the other things you're excited about, which is the metaverse, are basically building worlds in the in the digital space. And you have to start to think about all the basic human rights that transfer from our physical meat vehicles out to the digital copies of ourselves, representations of ourselves. It's really important to think about. The thing you mentioned about regulators that has been, this is me speaking, frustrating, is like you said, they follow technology. So sometimes they don't get the technology at all. So they're very clumsy in writing laws that censor that technology in interesting ways. They mean good, but they can do a lot of unintended damage. Now, both, it's a dance. It's a beautiful dance, but I just wish governments were better dance partners. I just see what they're kind of writing now about regulating social media and um, platforms like YouTube, and it's just really, really clumsy. They don't understand how machine learning works, how I recommend their systems work. And I just wish they kind of caught up a little more because it's really important to be great at regulation, but also it's important to let companies flourish and embrace this new wave of technology. That that weird dance, I, I'm more and more learning, looking at public pol policy, how much positive government can do and how much clumsy negative it can do unintentionally just out of sheer incompetence or lack of curiosity about tech. <laughs> That's my rant about regulators. <laughs> I, I think it's a valid point. As I said before, I think the Europeans probably have a very good framework, but you know, the way, the way I'll, I'll think about it, we, we depend on have the ability to innovate. We depend on the free markets. We depend on the ability to create, uh, you know, technology that, uh, that will be disruptive. But at the same time, I think the tech companies probably should spend time helping governments understand, helping understand uh, ahead of time so that they can be better prepared.